What's going on, Giants fans? Back at it with another video. And in this video, I'm going to reveal my mock draft 1.0 for the New York football Giants. Do want to apologize. I have not posted a video in a while. Been a little hectic over at my other channel at Review and Preview Sports, where I just hosted an NFC East roundtable the other night. Make sure to go check that out at Review and Preview Sports on YouTube and Facebook. Make sure to subscribe. And of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel at Big Blue Avenue. So this is going to be my first of one, potentially two Bach drafts. Going to try to get another one out next week. But uh, the Giants are in a very interesting spot at number 11 overall. They have a lot of options. I think free agency opened up a lot of draft flexibility at number 11. We know Dave Gettleman does not have a history of trading back in the draft as a GM. I think that's a little... Uh, of an overhyped narrative. I think people use that to talk about and find something to pick on. I, I think uh, you really shouldn't go into that mindset saying the Giants are sticking at number 11 for sure. I think they will. I don't think they should trade back. Although I do think there's more of a possibility that they keep the number 11 overall pick and try to trade back up into the first round. But I'm going to do this mock draft without any trades. Uh, I'm going to start with 11, move on to 42, so on and so forth. So I've narrowed my options down to four guys, right? And I think both Bama wide receivers are in play. I think a receiver, you want to add more weapons for Daniel Jones. That's a possibility. I do think offensive line is in play here as well. Rashawn Slater, a guy out of Northwestern that they could kick into the guard position if they like that combo of Nate Solder and Matt Pert at right tackle. I wouldn't invest a, the number 11 overall pick in a player who's going to be playing guard and replacing Kevin Zeitler. I'd rather find that guy in either the second or the third round on day two. Uh, and then the fourth option, of course, is Micah Parsons, who is probably, not probably, but definitely the most talented defensive player in this draft. Last year, I was a big advocate for Isaiah Simmons if they didn't go tackle. So I think Micah Parsons fits that need that the Giants have as far as pass coverage linebackers. But uh, despite his ties to uh, defensive line coach for the Giants currently in Sean Spencer, while he did he was an assistant coach there at Penn State, I do think that the character concerns are an issue for the Giants and Joe Judge. I know they've spoken to Micah. Uh, um, these reports don't make me think that the Giants won't take him at 11, but I don't necessarily think they help his case either at number 11. I do think there's a chance that he can dip in this draft, but he would solve a lot of our problems, especially with covering tight ends. So to be honest, I think Rashad Slater might be off the board at this point. I think the Giants are going wide receiver if they stick at number 11, because at that point you're looking at best player available, especially if a lot of quarterbacks go early. So I'm taking Jalen Waddell at number 11 overall out of Alabama. That's what my original pick was before free agency. I know it's after free agency now, but I'm going to stick with it. He's an explosive cat type of wide receiver with a low center of gravity. Uh, has the potential to be one of the fastest wide receivers in the game to ever play. Uh, not to mention his touchdown, his touchdown receptions at Alabama, over half of them were over 50 yards just to keep that in mind. There are some injury concerns. He had the ankle injury last year. But other than that, not too much of an injury history. I think he'll be okay. Obviously, not having him open the door for Devontae Smith to absolutely explode last year at Alabama. But Jalen Waddle's a guy, he never had a 1,000-yard season at Alabama, but he did have four touchdowns this past year. Pretty good numbers in the limited action that he played. Three-year guy for them. I also think his best numbers did come as a freshman back in 2018. It'll be interesting to monitor to see if Waddle does go in that top 10, but I do think there's a chance that he slips to the Giants, and if he does, they have to take him at number 11 overall. Remember, this is a best player available situation for the Giants, as they've always done. This is not a place where you reach for a position of need, right? Whether it's, as I mentioned, guys before like Whitey Pay, Jalen Phillips, Aziz Ojolari. Uh, there's such a strong desire this offseason to give Daniel Jones as many weapons as possible. I know we got, went out and signed Kenny Galladay, paid him the bag, but he didn't play many games last year for Detroit. He has an injury history. Sterling Shepard also has an injury history. Same thing with John Ross. Darius Slayton, 
I think he'll do better in year number three because year number two, he was the only guy last year who was really healthy at that wide receiver position, and he saw a lot of attention. I think with less attention, he'll put out more production. But I think Jalen Waddell is going to be an excellent addition to this football team. The Giants, as a team last year, had 27 touchdowns in 16 games, 25 offensive touchdowns. Divide 25 by 16. That's the amount of offensive touchdowns you get per game. You need help on offense. Jalen Waddell is an excellent addition. Um, so, yeah, I think that's my pick at number 11 overall. Moving on to the second round. Now, this is a round where the Giants could do multiple things. Now, obviously, I have them taking a wide receiver. So they could address the edge rusher position. They could address the offensive line. They could also get a interior defensive line. So I think those are the three positions to look out for. I think Christian Barmore will be off the board by that point. If Creed Humphrey slips the 42, you got to take him, but I don't think he does. It's possible that edge rushers like Jason Owe, local guy from Howell, New Jersey, slips the 42. You definitely take him. Uh, the no sacks last year don't really concern me, but I think he'll be off the board by that point. If the Giants want a guy like Aziz Ojolari or Jason Owe, they will absolutely have to trade back into the latter portion of the first round. So, as I mentioned, the value picks at 11 just aren't there for the edge rusher position. That's why I don't have them taking an edge in the first round. Otherwise, I would. But the guys that you're realistically going to be looking at here at the edge rusher position at number 42 are guys like Joe Tryon out of Washington who didn't play last year, Carlos Basham out of Wake Forest, Ronnie Perkins, who doesn't have the best track record. He had a suspension in college, so I would avoid him. And Joseph Asai out of Texas are four names here, and I'm going with Joseph Asai, number 42 overall for the New York football Giants, 6'4", 235, junior. Uh, also, he's a former interior linebacker, so he made that transition. His stock actually started to skyrocket once he made the transition from inside linebacker to the edge rusher position. He's an ideal fit for a 3-4 scheme. I think he fits us perfectly. Um, not as well as Aziz, but if you don't get Aziz, this is the next best option in my opinion. He had five sacks and three forced fumbles this past season. Three of his sacks came in that Oklahoma State game. He sacked Joe Burrow a couple times in his career, also intercepted Joe Burrow once in a game against LSU. Joe's Fasai would be an absolute steal. High motor, racks up tackles too. He doesn't just get pressure off the edge. He racks up tackles. He has long arms, lengthy arms, which will benefit him against those larger size tackles. Not the best reaction time off the snap, which is one negative aspect of taking him. Blockers beat him consistently in the run game. So I think the Giants will go Joseph Asai here at number 42. I think the positives definitely outweigh the negatives. And I think, again, similar situation when Dave Gettleman was with the organization back in 06. We traded back to take Matthias Kiwanuka, number 32 overall. You could never have enough edge rushers on this roster. Obviously, we know Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Zimenez were both hurt a lot last year. Lorenzo Carter entering a contract year. You have unknowns in Carter Coughlin and Cam Brown and Nico Lelos as well. And then you did bring in a Fadio Denibo in free agency, who, in my opinion right now, should be penciled as the opposite edge starter of Lorenzo Carter. But Odenibo will probably be a versatile player who could play both the edge and on that defensive line, similar to what uh, that position that Leonard Williams plays, the three-tech. He could transition between the three-tech and the five-tech, but – Joseph Asai at number 42. Number 76 in the third round. Again, so I have an edge off the board. We have to go offensive line at this point. The ideal draft for me, position-based for the Giants, would be edge first, guard slash defensive tackle in rounds two and three. But due to where we're at at number 11, I think the value is there for receiver in the first, edge in the second. The value for edge in the second round is insane. And I think guards come more in the second, third round, and this is where we have to take a guard. The guy I have here is Ben Cleveland out of Georgia. SEC guy. We drafted an SEC lineman last year. Andrew Thomas played with him. I think that chemistry could potentially benefit the Giants as an offensive line unit. 
He can play either guard spot. He'll probably be the right guard. He's an excellent run blocker. Um, you know, I also thought about Ali McNeil here at 76, that defensive tackle out of NC State. I thought he'd be great. I know Fireside Giants interviewed him, but um, we need to replace Kevin Zeitler. That's big in this draft. Ben Cleveland comes in 6'6", 340, redshirt senior, five-year player, a lot of experience. He's a mauler. Dave Gettleman loves his hog molly. He's very powerful. Uh, really, he wasn't a full-time starter until later on in his collegiate career, but Ben Cleveland is a really, really good player who I happen to like a lot. His film is insane. Um, he does have stiff knees and pass protection. His footwork and drive blocks um, need to improve. That's going to be key for him to be a consistent NFL-level starter. Um, I also considered a couple of other players here, Chris Rumpf out of Duke, Ali McNeil, as I mentioned, but I like Ben Cleveland a lot. He's going to be a good, good guard in the NFL wherever he falls, but hopefully – we get him in the third round if he's still there. So Ben Cleveland is my guy. All right, so moving on to round four. There's a lot of good value here at several positions. I think this is where we go interior defensive line. The Giants have already spoken to this player and have had communication with him. Tyler Shelvin, defensive tackle out of LSU at number 116 overall in the fourth round. Now I know – the Giants have a record of drafting defensive tackles early in this draft. I'm not saying that Tyler Shelvin is the next Dalvin Tomlinson. That's not the point. We signed Danny Shelton to a one-year deal. We brought back Austin Johnson on a one-year. Tyler Shelvin could be a potential developmental prospect who could potentially be a starter. He could be a backup next year if they don't bring either of those other DTs back, and then we draft a DT early in next year's draft. But a little bit of background about Tyler Shelvin, 6'3", 345. He does have weight problems. He met with the Giants, did not play in 2020. He's a pure run stuffer, similar to what Dalvin was, who can engage double teams, which will free up tackles for players like Blake Martinez and Jabril Peppers, Logan Ryan. He's a hard worker in the weight room as well. Quick recognition going up against centers and guards, those interior offensive linemen. He was suspended once for failing to keep his weight down. It wasn't a character issue. It was, uh, you know, it was a body issue. But uh, conditioning can be a problem for this player. But I think the Giants look past that. This is a fourth round pick, guys. Uh, championships are won in rounds two through seven, and I think Tyler Shelvin is a great kid that could potentially come into this uh, locker room and help his team out a lot as a rotational piece in 2021. So. We don't have a fifth-round pick, but we do have two picks in the sixth round. Originally, we only had five picks in this draft, but we traded away Marcus Golden, so we got um, a second sixth-round pick based off of that. But going down the board to 196, I have the Giants taking running back Elijah Mitchell out of Louisiana. And fun fact, our current offensive line coach, Rob Sale, was the former offensive coordinator for the Raging Cajuns. So he has that tie to Elijah Mitchell. So Rob Zale has the inside scoop on this guy. A lot of the Giants moves in this offseason have been made off of connections. Elijah Mitchell, 5'11", ranging around 215 to 220 pounds. He's clocked in at 218. He's a senior. Averaged over six yards per carry in college. Eight touchdown rushes in 2020. 16 the year prior and over 1,100 yards and 13 the year prior to that. So I really like this guy. He's a good player for inside and wide zone run concepts. He can catch the ball. He can kind of be that Deion Lewis type of filler type of guy. I know we've brought in Devontae Booker to be more of that north and south. Mitchell is a north and south guy too, but he does have pass catching abilities. Uh, great work ethic from what I've seen blazing 40 yard at his pro day. I don't know if you watched that. If you haven't, could please do so because he's quick. Um, solid vision too for a ball carrier. And uh, he didn't play much special teams at Louisiana, but he has the ability to cover on special teams. And again, we don't know what the future holds for Saquon Barkley. If Saquon Barkley is doesn't come back and he's not healthy, I, I know the Giants will probably exercise his fifth year, but – if you don't want to pay more money and bring him back, he's not the same player. 
Elijah Mitchell could be a late round flyer that turns into our starter in the future. Look what happened with Ahmad Bradshaw, former day three pick who eventually became our starter after a couple of years. So Elijah Mitchell could be a real sleeper in this draft. And with my last pick, guys, you can never have enough DBs in the, in the NFL, especially with the way the league has gone uh, over the past decade. I have the Giants taking Trey Brown, cornerback out of Oklahoma. This is another guy that I think ideally fits what the Giants are looking for as a team. Trey Brown is 5'10", 185, senior, experienced guy, three picks in 2020. He's best in a man coverage scheme type of fit. And the Giants do a lot of their homework and scouting in the senior bowl, right? This year's senior bowl MVP was Des Fitzpatrick. He was a wide receiver. He had high praise for two cornerbacks. One of them was Asante Samuel Jr., and the other was Trey Brown. Now, if Trey Brown falls to the sixth round, the Giants got to hop on that, but I think he will. I, I do I do think he will. I think people are a little concerned. He's a little – I mean, most corners are small, but this guy is relatively small. Uh, he's strong for his size, though. He's very strong. Um, he bullies more passive wide receivers, guys that aren't quick off their first step. I think he's really good in clutch moments as well. He, I mean – you watch some of the games he played at Oklahoma, had a lot of game ceiling plays for them, for the Sooners. And he could be a potential backup corner. So I know the Giants, they went out, they signed Adoree Jackson, who does have an injury history. They have James Bradbury. They have Darnay Holmes. They have Julian Love, who can play both corner and safety. You have Isaac Yottam. But you could also add Trey Brown to the mix. You're always looking to upgrade your roster. Just because you have a lot of guys doesn't mean that's what you're going to go in with into the following season. I think drafting a corner like this late, he could potentially be the number five corner behind those four corners I just mentioned. If you throw, if Julian Love, you know, could be, he's that a corner slash safety, but the four true corners on this roster right now, my opinion are Bradbury, Jackson, Holmes, and Yada. I don't know what's going to happen with Sam Beal. I think Trey Brown could push Sam Beal off this roster. Trey Brown will probably be primarily a special teams player. He could emerge into a special teams ace with the way I look at things. Um, excellent, too, on kick and punt coverage from his film at Oklahoma, and he can compete for return snaps. That's a big factor, too. Joe Judge highly values special teams. He's a former special teams coordinator. Trey Brown brings a lot of good special teams traits to the table, which is why he's a real option here for the Giants at pick number 201. Um, concerns about him, short arms, which means could lead to a lot of missed tackles. Also at the NFL level, what do short arms tell you? Could also lead to a lot of penalties, a lot of holdings, pass interferences, illegal contact penalties. That's what happens with guys with shorter arms, and that's why they usually don't last the starting corners in the league. We've seen this happen once before. But, guys, again, Look, we only have six picks, so I really took a more calculated approach to this mock draft. I do think there's a real chance we do um, trade back into the first round after picking at 11 to take a guy like Aziz Ojolari. That would be a home run, by the way, if you get him in the late 20s, mid to late 20s. Uh, who best fits this scheme? Obviously, last time we traded back into the first round um, for a player – out of Georgia, that was DeAndre Baker two years ago. We know that did not end up very good for us in the long haul. But, folks, that is my mock draft. I want to thank you all for watching this video. Really do appreciate it. If you like what you watch, make sure to subscribe to the channel here at Big Blue Avenue. Give this video a like button. Comment below in the stream your thoughts, what you like, what maybe you would have done differently. Always open to you know, a lot of suggestions and whatnot. And thank you.